he means it. Why is it the most wonderful experience a human can have? Because at the very fiber core of our being, we have a creative essence. And prayer is the act of uniting that creative essence with our awareness of being in a way that gives birth to a new conception of awareness itself. Welcome back to another episode of Daily Neville. I am your host, Josiah Brandt. Daily Neville is all about breaking down the teachings of Neville Goddard, making them easy to understand, easy to digest, easy to apply in 20 minutes or less. Today, we're continuing with Neville's famous book, Your Faith is Your Fortune. And this is the chapter that is all about prayer. Now, if you've been following Daily Neville for a while, you know that season two was all about the book written by Neville, Prayer, the Art of Believing, And we also understand that the full definition of prayer is the art of believing what is denied by the senses. So if you're curious to go further into prayer than what Neville is going to reveal in this chapter, I encourage you to check out season two of Daily Neville. Let's go ahead and continue with this chapter here in Your Faith is Your Fortune, titled Prayer. Prayer. When thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father which is in secret. And thy father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. Matthew 6, 6. What things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you have received them, and you shall have them. Mark 11, 24. Neville writes, Prayer is the most wonderful experience man can have. Unlike the daily murmurings, of the vast majority of mankind in all lands, who by their vain repetitions hope to gain the ear of God. Prayer is the ecstasy of a spiritual wedding taking place in the deep, silent stillness of consciousness. In its true sense, prayer is God's marriage ceremony. Prayer is God's marriage ceremony. Just as a maid on her wedding day relinquishes the name of her family to assume the name of her husband, in like manner, the one who prays must relinquish his present name or nature and assume the nature of that for which he prays. The Gospels have clearly instructed man as to the performance of this ceremony in the following manner. When you pray, Go within in secret and shut the door, and your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. The going within is the entering of the bridal chamber. Just as no one but the bride and groom are permitted to enter so holy a room as the bridal suite on the night of the marriage ceremony, likewise, no one but the one who prays and that for which he prays are permitted to enter the holy hour of prayer. We're going to start right there. Neville is saying that prayer is the most wonderful experience man can have. Neville isn't one to waste words. When Neville says prayer in its true form is the most wonderful experience a human can have, he means it. He means it. Why is it the most wonderful experience a human can have? Because at the very fiber core of our being, we have a creative essence. And prayer is the act of uniting that creative essence with our awareness of being in a way that gives birth to a new conception of awareness itself. It is a sacred act and the most wonderful experience anyone can have. According to Neville, also according to me, but you have to try this for yourself to really understand what this means. You really have to experience this for itself. Now, he's talking about using a marriage ceremony as, as, a, as a correlate here. He's saying the bride on the wedding day is giving up her family name and taking on the name, and of course, name means nature, of her husband. 
in the traditional sense. And in so doing, in prayer, we have to give up the former conception of ourselves, the former nature of that which we were expressing, and now align with a new nature. Shed the old, put on the new. And in this moment, this is a sacred act. And that's why you are going into the bridal suite. This is the holy hour of prayer. Now, the reason I'm really emphasizing and, and magnifying this and surface, surfacing the value of this is because for a lot of us who maybe struggle a little bit with planting these seeds in our awareness or having success and bringing to fruition, bringing to fullness, getting our seeds to bear fruit, perhaps it would help if we began to look at this planting of the seed as a holy hour, as this act of prayer, as a holy hour. If we were to cherish this act with the level of sacredness that one perhaps in a traditional sense would cherish the act of, of, of marriage or the holy union of a bride and a groom, if we gave that same measure of importance, that same measure of, of sacred veneration to this act, perhaps that would bring another level of engagement with these ideas. So what I'm suggesting in this moment is to begin to give this sacred act a sense of being a holy hour, to really cherish this sacred act of union and communion with this deeper level of your being. Neville says, as the bride and groom on entering the bridal suite securely shut the door against the outside world, so too must the one who enters the holy hour of prayer close the door of the senses and entirely shut out the world round about them. This is accomplished by taking the attention completely away from all things other than that with which you are now in love, which is the thing desired. To be successful, Imaginal acts really need to evoke a sense of love within you. You really need to feel this thrill of desire. This It should feel like a romance. You should be romancing this state of yourself. And as we spoke about in the previous episode of Daily Neville, if whatever it is that you're claiming for yourself is not evoking an emotional response in this way, you've got the wrong thing. You think it's the end, but it's not the end. Because if you truly go to the end, and you really begin to feel that end, it evokes a sense of thrill. It evokes a sense of romance. It makes you feel like you're falling in love deeper with a deeper aspect of yourself. You're loving yourself in a new, deeper, more fulfilling way when you're giving yourself this expression. So sit with this and begin to cultivate this deeper level of love, this deeper level of desire, and begin to really sit and soak in it and treat this, the act of doing so, as a holy hour of prayer. Neville continues, the second phase of this spiritual ceremony is defined in these words. When you pray, believe that you have received and you shall receive. As you joyfully contemplate being and having, that which you desire to be and to have, you have taken this second step and are therefore spiritually performing the acts of marriage and generation. Your receptive attitude of mind, Neville writes, while praying or contemplating, can be likened to a bride or womb, for it is that aspect of mind which receives the impressions. That which you contemplate being is the groom, for it is the name or nature you assume, and therefore it is that which leaves its impregnation. So one dies to maidenhood, or the present nature, as one assumes the name and nature of the impregnation. Lost in contemplation, and having assumed the name and nature of the thing contemplated, your whole being thrills with the joy of being it. This thrill, which runs through your whole entire being as you appropriate the consciousness of your desire, is the proof 
that you are both married and impregnated. What does he mean by that? Married and impregnated. So married is, again, assuming the new nature, casting off the old identity, leaving the maiden name behind, taking on the new name or nature, the new conception of yourself. That's the marriage. Impregnated is you are now carrying a child, again, in a spiritual sense, and that child would be the expression of the impression. So the child would be the hardening into material form and fact into the world around you in a way that all can see, touch, taste, and hear using their senses, the evidence. So if a child conceived by a man and a woman is an evidence of their union, so would your manifestation be an evidence of your union with yourself on a higher level. As you return from this silent meditation, Neville writes, the door is once more opened upon the world you had left behind. But this time, you return as a pregnant bride. You enter the world a changed being. And, although no one but you knows of this wonderful romance, the world will, in a very short while, see the signs of your pregnancy. For you will begin to express that which you, in your hour of silence, felt yourself to be. The mother of the world, or bride of the Lord, is purposely called Mary, or water. For water loses its identity as it assumes the nature of that with which it is mixed. Likewise, Mary, the receptive attitude of mind, must lose its identity as it assumes the nature of the thing desired. So I looked this up. I looked up the name Mary, and I found that one of the translations of this Hebrew name Mary translates to of the sea. And I think that's what Neville is referring to here. He's saying Mary, which the correlation of that name means of the sea or water-like. And so he's talking about how water takes on the shape of the container which it is in, assumes the nature of that which it is mixed. Likewise, Mary, the receptive mind, must lose its identity as it assumes the new nature of the thing desired. So this is why Mary was the virgin mother. Virgin, meaning impregnated at a higher level. New, didn't need the aid of a man to become impregnated. Mary is that quality of consciousness which remains forever pure. It can always be pressed upon, but it is ever. you can always press something new upon it. That's, that's why it's virgin-like in that way. It always remains fresh and impressionable. Neville continues, only as one is willing to give up his present limitations and identity, can he become that which he desires to be. Prayer is the formula by which such divorces and marriages are accomplished. You should think about this concept for a moment. When you're choosing to be a new conception of yourself, you're choosing to marry, and by that I mean assume the nature of a new concept of self. And in so doing, you are literally divorcing an old concept of yourself. Sometimes it helps to characterize these ideas using human societal words such as marriage and divorce. Think about what it means to divorce an old aspect of your being and understand that you must divorce the old aspect of your being before you can assume the nature of the new aspect of your being. That's how this game is played. That's how this works. You literally have to put off the old to be able to assume the nature of the new. And it's like a divorce. And prayer is the formula by which the divorce is made and the marriage is made. You're changing the nature of that which you are united with as a conscious being through this act of prayer, which again is the greatest experience a human can have. Neville says, Two shall agree as touching anything, and it shall be established on earth. The two agreeing are you, and you're the bride, and the thing desired, which is the groom. As this agreement is accomplished, a son, bearing witness of the union, will be born. So the son is the outpicturing into the 3D, 
as the physical evidence of the intercourse which took place. Now, on a spiritual level, this spiritual romance, this act of generation, as Neville calls it, is going to yield evidence. The tree will bear fruit. And in this case, it's a spiritual fruit, but it comes clothed in form and fact. And that's the expression of the spiritual impression. All things that we experience here in the 3D plane have a spiritual origin. And Neville is revealing the nature of that spiritual origin in these words. You begin to express and possess that which you are conscious of being. Praying, then, is recognizing yourself to be that which you desire to be, rather than begging God for that which you desire. So prayer is recognizing yourself, recognizing. That's this act of contemplation where you assume the feeling, you begin to see it, you begin to think from it, you begin to listen as though space itself was telling you that you are now that which you desire to be, recognizance, recognizing, recognizing yourself to be that which you desire to be. That is prayer. It's not asking or begging some external being to give you something. It's recognizing that you are. It's recognizing that you are that which you desire to be. Neville continues, millions of prayers are daily unanswered because man prays to a God who does not exist. Consciousness being God, one must seek in consciousness for the thing desired by assuming the consciousness of the quality desired. Only as one does this will his prayers be answered. To be conscious of being poor while praying for riches is to be rewarded with that which you are conscious of being, in this case, poverty. Prayers to be successful must be claimed and appropriated. Assume the positive consciousness of the thing desired. Assume the positive consciousness of the thing desired. With your desire defined, quietly go within and shut the door behind you. Lose yourself in the desire. Feel yourself to be one with it. Remain in this fixation. It is a fixation. That's what it should feel like. It should feel like you are fixated upon this state of being to really complete the spiritual romance. Feel fixated upon it. Remain in this fixation until you have absorbed the life and name by claiming and feeling yourself to be and to have that which you desired. When you emerge from the hour of prayer, you must do so, conscious of being and possessing that which you heretofore or previously desired. That last sentence is so important. You previously desired it. Why previously? You don't desire it anymore. Why not? Because now you are. Don't desire what you already have, just simply are it. It's okay to desire something now, but the only answer to a desire is to go into prayer, meaning assume the nature of being it, and then when you come out, you desire it no more. You're already united with it, and you know that you are pregnant, and that pregnancy will bear the evidence. Clothed, material, flesh, Evidence of the senses. That's what I mean when I say evidence. Evidence of the senses of your spiritual union. An amazing revelation of the mystic truth of prayer. And I feel goes even deeper, perhaps, than this idea of prayer is the art of believing what is denied by the senses. This takes it to another level. This idea of the marriage and of the consummation of the marriage at the level of the spiritual plane. Revelation of Mystic Secrets, brought to you in this moment, thanks to Neville and this amazing book, Your Faith is Your Fortune. In the next episode of Daily Neville, we're going to continue by beginning to illuminate the sacred, secret, mystic truth of the 12 disciples. Until then, 
Imagine wisely, my friends, and I'll see you in the next.